In this video, we present visualizations of a simulated supercell thunderstorm that produces a long track EF5 tornado, the most powerful class of tornado. In this simulation, the tornado forms from the parent cloud, reaches EF5 strength, and is on the ground for over an hour and a half. To the best of our knowledge, this represents the first simulation of its kind. Visualizations of the storm are produced with very high fidelity, including photorealistic type views as well as views of the internal workings of the storm. We begin with a view of the storm from about 100 kilometers. This is a volume rendered representation of the cloud field. The cloud exhibits many features seen in the field, including an overshooting top, an anvil, and a mesocyclone. In order to capture the processes leading to the tornado's formation, the simulation is run at very high resolution, and these images give you a sense of the scale between the thunderstorm and the much smaller tornado itself, which must be adequately resolved. The tornado's damage path is over 100 kilometers long. In this image, we show the tornado's path with the top track representing the surface wind speed and the bottom track representing the surface pressure deficit, highlighting the low pressure in the center of a tornado. The strongest winds in the tornado exceed 130 meters per second with the pressure drops exceeding 150 hectopascals. This sequence shows the cloud and rain fields during the tornado formation and maintenance phase. Features shown here before tornado formation including a tail cloud streaming in from the right and a wall cloud which forms shortly before the tornado condensation funnel descends to the ground. Shortly following tornado genesis, a curtain of rain originating from the storm's rear flank wraps around the tornado and wall cloud, a feature which has been observed in the field. Over time, the tornado strengthens and widens and is occasionally enshrouded in rain. In the real world, a so-called rain-wrapped tornado presents a serious danger to field observers of such storms. Roughly speaking, vorticity is a measure of the air's rotation. Here we represent vorticity as a volume rendered field. Along the storm's forward flank boundary, rain cooled air is consolidated into a region of horizontal vorticity. This train of vorticity is tilted and ingested into the storm's powerful updraft, where it contributes towards the updraft's rotation during tornado genesis. Again, we explore the vorticity field, focusing on larger values during tornado genesis. The storm's updraft is clearly tilting horizontally oriented vorticity into the vertical, where it then contributes towards the updraft's rotation, which is primarily along a vertical axis. In this sequence, A represents an anticyclonic or clockwise rotating vortex, while C represents the vortex that becomes the tornado itself. The inset image is our cloud and rain as before, while the larger image shows vorticity and surface buoyancy. The vortex that becomes the EF5 tornado can be seen in the vorticity field several minutes before the tornado touches down. As the tornado strengthens, it undergoes a process called vortex breakdown, which is evident in the vorticity field where the tornado breaks into a two tightly coupled vortices as it ascends from the ground. This process has been seen in both laboratory and numerical models of tornadoes. We now explore the pressure field looking at the minus 15 hectopascal isosurface. The tornado is clearly visible as a primarily vertically oriented tube. A lobe of low pressure off the side of the updraft along the storm's forward flank is associated with the train of vorticity that was shown earlier. We now explore the vorticity field at a snapshot in time while the tornado is producing winds exceeding 120 meters per second at the ground. We highlight the structure of the storm-cooled air along the boundary. 
Zooming in, we can see the train of vorticity, several small vortices that will merge with the tornado, and the tornado itself, which is exhibiting vortex breakdown aloft. This sequence shows the vorticity field during maintenance when the tornado is consistently producing EF5 strength winds. A key feature revealed by these visualizations is the train of vorticity that forms along the storm's forward flank boundary and is tilted into the vertical where it becomes part of the storm's rotating updraft. Here we show the same sequence, zooming in on this feature, which is shown to be distinct from the tornado itself. In this sequence, we release particles every two seconds along the storm's forward flank boundary, showing the path of the air. Air ahead of the storm is shown to enter the storm's updraft that encircles the tornado, while air originating from the storm's cold pool can be seen spiraling in towards the tornado near the ground. Here we release particles that originate from within the train of vorticity itself. Notice how the air flows along the vorticity field. Meteorologists refer to this type of flow as streamwise vorticity, where the vorticity vector and the wind vector are aligned. Here we look at steady state stream tubes during tornado maintenance. The origin of the stream tubes is moved across the forward flank boundary. This sequence shows the different path air takes that is ahead of the storm versus air that originates from within the storm's cold pool. Here we release particles in the storm's rear flank downdraft region. These particles follow a turbulent path where most eventually find their way into the storm's updraft and the outer periphery of the tornado. Here, we capture a surge in the rear flank downdraft region of the storm. In the following two sequences, we release a horizontal plane of particles every two seconds around the tornado about one and a half kilometers above the ground. The tornado exhibits a two-celled structure which is characterized by a downdraft in the center of the tornado. Particles can be seen descending and recirculating upwards into the updraft as would be expected with a two-cell tornado.